Hello people, this is Bear from Bear Collector, and today as we start to do here on the channel, we're going to take a look at what is the estimated pack value using mathematics as always, and try to answer the question, can you make money opening Polydian Fates? Now, now before we get started, I'm doing this because it's not the first time we do it here on the channel. As you can see, I've been doing this for Poldi Evolved as well as Lost Origin, and I do one thing that I don't see many YouTubers doing, and that is looking at also credit cards value to integrate into the model. So if you're curious, definitely go check those videos out. And without wasting too much time, let's get straight into Poldian Fates. So Poldian Fates, obviously we know this set has been out for such a short time, and that is why we are expecting prices to drop significantly. However, nonetheless, we're going to take a look at what is the estimated pack value using the usual mathematical tools. So here just a light of the main cards, but your face if you're not familiar with it. And obviously these four SIR are the main chase card of the set, Charger, the Mew, God of War, and the Iono. And it's also worth mentioning that the Iono from Poldium Fates is still more expensive, almost double actually, than this one from Poldium Fates. And then, as we can see, these three shiny rares, obviously Pikachu, Charmander, Chamuel, are holding value, they're holding strong. And the one question I want to raise is, there's 120 shiny rares, that's quite a lot. Are these going to hold not a significant value? They might not stay at this price forever, but are we going to see them dropping as much as other cards? As always, that's the unknown. What we know is current prices. So without further ado, let's get into the technicals. So here we are with the usual spreadsheet. As you can see here, there's a ton of shiny rares. We went over the three main chase cards and then the rest of them just hold significantly less value. We have double rares, ultra rares, shiny ultra rares, illustration rares, and special illustration rares as well hyper rare. Now, interesting that they reprinted again, Chimpao, Koraiden, Raiden, Yax, which understandable as they are currently played in the meta. However, did they really need a reprint? Now here, as you can see, data has been gathered from TCG Infinity, as we like to do here on the channel, as well as Danny Phantom. Obviously, I'm sure all of you watching know Danny, so these are the number of pack opens as well as a big shout out to one of my subscriber and Discord member who provided me with a spreadsheet. I just needed to do some modification. So thanks again for the help. And uh, if you're not in the Discord, I highly recommend you join. It's completely free and you'll find both European and Americans in there talking about cardboard. So again, I don't want to waste too much time today. We're using the same assumption that we've been using for the previous models. We're assuming that in every rarity, so every rarity slot, shiny rare, double rare, ultra rare, blah, 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 has every card has the same probability of being pulled. It means that pulling a Charmander has the same probability as pulling a Charmeleon and so on. Pulling a Charizard as IR has the same probability of pulling an Iono as IR. Now, could that be the case? Again, if Pokemon does their job, if we open an enormous amount of pack. Theoretically, you should open a number close to infinity. We know that's not possible. Those numbers should match up. Those hypotheses should work. However, we know that many times that is not the case. Nonetheless, that's the assumption we're making in order to let the math work in. And simple here, we, we gather as always empirical data. So they open packs, they gave us the pull rates and we're just using the average value. Average value is always calculated, summing up all the values of a given rarity and then divided by the number of cards. And that's what we're gonna do because as I said, we're assuming that every card within a certain rarity slot has the same probability of being pulled. So that being said, as you can see here, that's TCG value booster pack, basically on TCG infinity. And this is the pack value based on Danny Phantom data. So you can see pretty close, not that much, but they tend to be pretty close. And that's many times you see this people doing here. What we like to do here in the channel, we'll say like, take a look and include into the model 
credit card value. And that's what we did for per diem fades. Again, this is the value I've seen recent sales on eBay going for. Now, PSA 9, basically, there's not really many 9s as well as there's so many really graded cards. For instance, number of Charizard SIR in a PSA 10 right now stands at 150, whereas the number of 9s stands at roughly uh, 100. So I expect these numbers to exponentially grow. I'm aware of that, and that should drive price down. Now, that has to be said. However, we're still going to compare the model. I, as I said, I gathered data from eBay last sales. PSA 10s and PSA 9 are basically raw prices. Given the fact that we do not have enough data for the number of graded cards, I needed to make a further assumption compared to pull D evolved and lost origin models. What I assumed is that you're going to open a pack. The pack is not going to be broken. It's not going to be damaged. It's going to be a genuine pack coming from steel product. So that way we know the cards inside are not damaged and you're going to open it and you're going to send it no matter what to PSA. You're, you're not even going to look at it. We're assuming that you're going to send it and you're going to get either a 9 or a 10, which for a card that hasn't been damaged before opening, it's usually the case. Most likely you get a 9. If it's good centering, good quality, which many times it is, other it's not, you're going to get a 10. So we're assuming that assumption. And we're assuming that 50% of the time you're going to get a 9 and 50% of the time you're going to get a 10. Now, for the previous models, I'll just give you an example. We did not make this assumption because we had the number of PSA 9 and 10 graded cards. We had enough graded cards so that we could get our probability. Using the same assumption as you're going to open a card, you're going to open a pack, assuming it's not damaged, blah, blah, blah. You're going to send it and then every people did the same because for these numbers in order to work. Again, I explained in, a, in the previous video, I'll actually just, I'll leave it to you guys if you want to look at the poly evolved. I explained, and you can see here as well, all the assumptions that I made. Nonetheless, I did explain the assumptions that have been made for the making of this video. So, 50% is going to get a 10, 50% is going to get a 9, and that's just packed a greater value of card. Now, we plug those numbers into the model, and just to give you a comparison, Look at this shiny rare. Shiny rare average price goes from four dollars to four eighty seven, and then look at SIR forty seven dollars to one hundred and two. Obviously, the Charizard and the Mew pulling this number crazy to the upside. Do the same thing, and now we get three dollars and eighty nine cents against two dollars and twenty and forty two with these G infinity data, and then. $4.37 against $2.66 with Danny Phantom data. And here, a simple visual representation of what we just mentioned. Now, let's take a look at what steel products are going for, both in the European and the American market. So, in the European market, you can find Polyurn Face booster bundles for as low as 23 euros, and there's quite a few. You can find steel bundle for also 23 euros times 10, so 230 euros for a 10x seal display, which I think is also, it looks pretty cool. I looked at it, I'm questioning whether to buy it or not, and um, I think it, it looks pretty cool to have, not gonna lie, I'm not sure about the value in the future, that's maybe a topic for another video, but it sure looks pretty awesome. So, Aren. Around 23 euros for a booster bundle without shipping. And then if we take a look at TCG Player, so the American market, we can see how they're selling for quite a similar price. You can see here a sealed display for $240. So a similar amount of money, as well as an ETB for around $40, which is the same that goes here for 40 euros in the European Union. So prices are pretty similar for now in both the EU and the US. And if we assume that we're going to get a, a booster bundle of 230 euros, let's say an average 20 euros, 15 euros of shipping, then it goes up to 245 euros. We get 60 packs in a sealed display, and that comes down to 4 euros and 10 cents per pack. 
So again, going back to the data, 4 euro and 10 cents per pack, we're kind of in the middle of these two numbers here that came from di different data sets. And um, does that mean that we can open Protein Fates and make money? Well, on average, if we open a large amount of packs, on average, we could make money. However, that was true if we sent cards to Greg graded as soon as the product came out, we paid not $15 for a PSA submission where we needed something more quick, more of an express submission. So maybe double or for the $45 tier to get it back as soon as possible in order to sell them. And maybe at that point we could have either broke even or made a little bit of profit. Is that something I recommend? Absolutely not. I don't think it's a good financial decision. Again, that's all in my opinion, but if you want to open a booster bundle, have fun with your kids, have fun with yourself, just enjoy just opening six pack. After all, it's 20 years, $20, despite the fact that we are sealed investors, it's always nice to have some fun on the road. Thanks for watching. Let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this kind of content. Unfortunately here, we do not have PSA graded reports that are significant yet, but we'll definitely do a comeback. We'll definitely do an update video as soon as those numbers start to populate. Again, don't forget to join the Discord if you want to join the growing community of both Europeans and Americans, as well as don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to miss out on any update. Last but not least, make sure to tune in for the live box break of Pauline Fates we're doing on the channel. It's gonna happen Saturday 2nd at 6 p.m. Central European time, that's 5 p.m. London time, and that is noon New York time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.